the pleasure of the Grub 2 menu on the 1920 by 1200 pixel display. So. And this is loading automatically the last month. I optimized this slightly to more reliable find the removable devices there. Maybe by the way I also need to apply the same login fix, not sure if this is using Getty by the way. Okay, maybe not. Okay, so to install T2 it's just stone. I will however not do here a repartitioning of the devices, I will just mount the existing devices for simplicity because I do not want to delete the data on it today. So, so I have an SSD and an old spinning disk in there. And Linux swap, Mac, yeah, better FS, Apple partition mat FS. So this is probably my current root file system, mount existing to root. And yeah, swap we don't really need with that much memory. Let's check what we got here in MNT target. Yeah, that looks like a system. And that is probably not that old either. Okay, not that old from 2005. <clears throat> so I usually, for testing, just move this to an old directory. So I'm current. Okay, dear old. Move everything to old. And do we have enough free? Here we, this partition is yeah, only 7% use, so so we can test install this. Let's see how this is going, given that the rewritable CD-ROM did not verify. And this also means that I'm not yet using full disk encryption. On my G4 Cube I already tested PowerPC Grub 2 full disk encryption. I will probably reinstall this in another month to my more modern setup with full disk encryption and such. And this is only a general T2 test installation to check the current T2 trunk for regressions and such. And just like this, in a snap, the installation is finished. I hope it really installed everything because actually I was just looking a minute away and then it was already done recharging the battery also here for the recording. And um, it's not showing any CD ROM errors in the D messages, so I hope we are fine. Maybe the installation was also faster because we are now using the set standard compression and also this most likely was booted with set standard um, init RD. Can we still see this? It's probably still mounted at source here. Yeah. And this is. Um, I also need to change then the second stage some other day. Boot init RD. Oh, we, or do we? No, we don't have file here, but can we see it on the. Actually, if we change root here and. Yeah, set standard compression. So we also tested set standard now on the Spark and on the PowerPC64. And this is probably also why the installation was just a bit faster, with a much faster set standard decompression compared to the BSIP2. So Grub2 is not yet as tested on PowerPC. Let's hope that installs. I'm actually not that sure what I've done there. Okay, Grub not found. That is already... But this, where we have to see, probably still some typos I need to fix there. Maybe grub should of course be grub2. So maybe this is only a typo in some device detection thing. Need to check this on another day then. Probably also need to polish here some text as well because I copied this over from, yeah, here it's actually saying no device map found for boot device. So, or did we had to so many details, start to forget things myself. Was it that the old system had a dedicated boot partition? No, it did not hit. So let's hope we can boot with this slightly not 100% finished Grub2 module for PowerPC and let's see what we get then. And um, also memory is Nine and a half gigabytes. Just about as I remembered. Can we? 
Nah, this is not rounding. So yeah, something like nine and a half gigabytes, so probably 512 original megabytes plus another gigabyte upgrade and another eight gigabyte upgrade, I guess. Yeah, reboot now and let's see if we are still booting. Pressing the Alt Option key just in case. Don't want that be default boot. As I said, always a little bit annoying for me personally to wait for this boot device scan on PowerPC. We could already continue, just need to wait for the Firewire scan or so to complete. So, fingers crossed. Yeah, okay, that was not going well. Actually, actually it could be that I had some open firmware stuff set specifically for the Scrub 2 test. So let's see if a default boot works in case I had set some open firmware magic boot string stuff. Yeah, okay, so actually that was the case. However, this is not the very latest install thing here. So this is what we had installed before. Our new kernel was 16.9 or so. And I had actually full disk encryption set up in contrast to what I said earlier. So then we may have installed it to the wrong drive actually. This happens when you have too many test machines. This, by the way, happens if the system management controller is not getting a frequency update for the fans. Then after 30 seconds or so, without any frequency update from the operating system, the system management ship is going into this emergency 100% fan mode for the case the operating system is crashed or something like that to prevent overheating of the CPUs. Okay, so now we are booting some full disk encryption previous system. And as the next thing, I need to figure out what is still missing on the Crop 2 details for PowerPC and um, respin a new ISO. So just a million details you need to take care of running a whole Linux distribution, especially for all the non-x86 architectures. So that's it for today. I hope you learned something. And as usual, don't forget to share, like and subscribe for all the next videos to come. One benefit of Crop 2 is of course that we can now edit this entry and still try to boot the new installation just to check if all the binaries and such with the latest GCC update and things like this, so let's try to manually edit this and see if we can boot. So I think there should be partition 7 and 16.9. So fence just turned on, so let's see. Set root IEEE HD Apple 7 and 16.9 SDA 7, let's see. It's already 16.10, so... But at least the kernel should work as we already booted the installer media. And in good old tradition we are running out of battery in the camera. Okay, so then all the rest works. Built from just yesterday T2 head. So everything except Drop 2 works and uh, we are having to debug and tweak this next.